What's up, guys? It's Milos from the Orthodox Quad podcast again with a new video with Sky and Bryce. Today, we are going to talk about why are we Orthodox Christian. So, Sky, why don't you go ahead and start us off with your decisions and why you are an Orthodox Christian? Well, it all started when I was uh, approached by a gang of Serbian gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> And they just held me against my will, and nah, but uh, one of them may or may not be here right now. Nah, but uh, in all seriousness, one of the main things that kind of drew me to looking into the Orthodox Church in the beginning was mainly church history, and I really enjoyed, I've always loved history growing up, so I really enjoyed um, church history and looking into that, because I've always enjoyed religion and history, so those kind of all came together into one and so looking into that and seeing because i grew up in like a protestantism so my brain was always like oh how do we get from the early church to to protestantism and then it was like oh this happened because of this this and this and this but then there was this split and so on and so forth and yeah just going tracing tracing back to uh the original church the true church some might say Mm -hmm. um and kind of looking into that and finding out more about orthodoxy whether it be online through friends like Milos here who uh, encouraged me to go to my first orthodox liturgy and so on and so forth so yeah by the way at me. what age did you get into church history well i guess when i was because uh, i always liked history from like a little kid but then i became like protestant i like i was raised protestant so it was kind of more recent that I started looking into the church history and the the Bible more, a lot more. And it was mostly over COVID and that whole pandemic time where I started looking a lot more into things and started going, wait, this doesn't make sense. Because I always knew what I guess I always had like a sense of like very core beliefs that I f had when I was a little kid, since I was a little kid and like, oh, no, this is wrong. This is like, it was just something that I just, I guess, a sense that I knew. And then that kind of drew me closer and closer towards the Orthodox Church and through church history and all that. So, yeah. What was uh, those core beliefs? Like, I guess a sense of, oh, like even, like even growing up, I was like, well, Christ says, this is my blood and this is my body. Like talking about the Eucharist, but then growing up hearing in a Protestant church, it was always like, this is figurative when it when growing up it was like to me this was like the literal blood and blood like to me it wasn't like figurative you know what i mean so because i was like this isn't figurative it's obviously not figurative he says it right here it's not figurative and just various things like that and i found myself aligning a lot closer to more high church um denominations and then right eventually jumping from protestantism to uh the original Church of the Apostles, which is the Orthodox Church. Yeah. Very just, interesting, uh, Sky. Even That's though you're still Sorry. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> That's a pretty uh, nice in-depth story. Uh, yeah, it like, is. It's pretty amazing. The long way you've come. Uh, yeah. It, it wasn't like, uh, What was the biggest obstacle in the beginning for you? I guess mainly like the one big obstacle coming from Protestant was intercessionary prayers and asking saints to pray for us and intercede on our behalf and stuff like that but then i was like then i kind of and then i sat down and, I, and then i kind of like got and then i i remember literally sitting down thinking about it well why would why would they do that why would they do that and then all of a sudden i just thought i was like well if they're not dead in well they're not dead because they're alive in christ so then it makes sense to ask someone to pray for you on your on intercede on your behalf if if you believe that they're not dead and that they are alive in Christ. So just going like going through that thought like going through that thought process and coming to the conclusion like wait, this is true. This is this is right and then kind of like going through like that little step by step working my way back mentally and then jumping through all the hoops. But yeah. Yeah, and you put it in a pretty good way. You explained it actually in your own words pretty nicely. 
Oh, thank you. How how the intercession works and why it works even. Yeah, and it says even in scripture somewhere, it's like the prayers of the righteous. Ask you ask the righteous to pray for you, and it's like the prayers of the righteous are worth more. So it, it talks about that, like the prayers mm. of those who are righteous being worth more. And if you know that they're alive in Christ, and you know that these are saints, these are the righteous. So you should ask them to pray, to, to intercede on your behalf. Like that. So, yeah. Like even for us, we're supposed to kind of intercede when we pray. Like, or at least in the evening prayers, we pray for others. Yeah, like pray. We, we pray oh. a lot for our friends and our family, mm -hmm. asking the Lord to help and guide them and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, and we shouldn't even pray for those who are not our friends, maybe who did us even wrong. That's yeah. why you should especially for pray for people. Pray mm. for your enemies, especially pray for your enemies. They need it the most. Because what good does it do for you if you're praying for someone you love and care about? Pray for someone that it goes against the grain for you to pray for. Pray for mm. that person. Oh, yeah. yeah, I pray for you, Sky, a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it was you a guys. pretty cute moment <laughs> captured on camera. <laughs> so let's go now to Bryce. Why I are you an Orthodox Christian? Why am I Orthodox? The food. The coffee it's hour. pretty good. The coffee hour is amazing. The, um, the rotation of families that cook for you. Like authentic. No, I... um. The biggest thing for me, but it still remains the biggest thing, is, and it's what drew me to the church in the first place somewhat, is I could see that this church is what it teaches, what is, um, what comes out of it is something that's transformative. Because to me, that's such a big part of Christianity. That's such a big part. I mean, that is such a big part of it, but the, you know, the fact that the tools in the church being a hospital for the sick, the sinners, it really does, like, it transforms your life. You have to put, you know, you have to put in work, and it's not like, you know, the Aladdin's lamp or whatever, but um, it really, it truly is a Mis like mysterious and wonderful in that way that um you know you it draws you closer to christ and i think that's i mean it's the most beautiful aspect of it and of course like you know you have a lifetime of doing such things and um i still feel like uh, it's almost like the first time every every time I go into church, uh, because I remember the first time I stepped into church and, you know, you're overwhelmed with the beauty of everything, the beauty of the icons, the beauty of the chants, the smell of incense. Because even though it's not my first time anymore, you know, it's such a drastic uh, difference from like the everyday life in the world. And it's always, it feels rejuvenating you know, once you step into that. So um, that would probably be the biggest thing. And of course, like the, you know, the, I think the community is always very good. It, it's drastically different from those online. Like it's, I've met some of the most hospitable, generous people in the church. That's amazing. And mm -hmm. Some of the things is that are very nicely. And I, that's another thing that I just wanted to add that Bryce spoke about is just the yep. community. The fact that like when I first entered like an Orthodox church, it was like, especially my current church, it was like, it was so hospitable. Everybody was so friendly. Everybody called me over. We ate and had, co and had the coffee hour like meal and stuff together. It was amazing. It was like family. It was like you were being welcomed in like family and it was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. I would say, I guess, uh, because you asked what is uh, like the biggest problem was. Yeah, what my was biggest your biggest issue. obstacle? What? Yeah, what was your biggest obstacle? It was uh, because it's very different. It is. It, it's a lot. It's hard. Like, it's not, you know, it's not something that you just join. 
and you know it's like some people may end up seeing that way that's obviously not like correct but it's like it's genuinely like it's a struggle and like i can't even imagine like you know i and i have a lot a long ways to go in you know in terms of that struggle but um i think uh especially i get it because it's so drastically different than western like churches or even like environments but it's a beautiful thing once you like even though it's uncomfortable at first you get used to it and it, you see how beautiful it is that's awesome how about you milos so for me it was like i was born into it so it's a bit different i really enjoyed it as a kid and in my early teenage years and i started to go less and less to liturgy when i was uh, starting my first job because it was harder for me to i was lazy that was it was hard for me to get up early in the morning so I, that was a really bad thing of me and then with like 18, 19, I started going out. I started to do parties and all of that. So I started to become really secular. I, all in my mind was just partying and doing nothing. And after a while, I became uh, religious again. By the time I was, I think, 24 23 23 yeah 24 around that time it was after the first year of corona i started to go after that i maybe went like every couple of i went you know my secular years i went maybe every couple of months once and that's about it and then i started going out going to church regularly again during the second year of corona And what kept me into the church again and drove me back into it was it um, after reading again about the Christianity and getting more interested into it, I realized it was the true church, the right way to do. And not only that, it helped me with my anxiety and other kinds of stuff I was dealing with at the time. So that was a big thing in my life so guys now that you heard our three views that are somewhat similar and somewhat different thank you guys for watching our video take care god bless and don't forget to like and comment how we can improve and do our videos in the future better god bless bye bye <laughs>